Hello grade tens. By now you should know how to solve fractional equations with single terms in the denominator. But what happens when the denominator has more than one term? In this lesson, we will show you how to solve fractional equations with more than one term in the denominator. Let's join Amashni for our first example. Let's look at this first example. Solve for p if 2 divided by p is equal to 3 divided by p minus 2. Before we solve for p, let's use what we discussed in a previous lesson about restrictions on the denominator. On the left hand side, we have 2 divided by p. We know that the value of p may not be equal to 0. So our restriction is that p is not equal to 0. Now in this fraction on the right hand side we have 3 divided by p minus 2. We know that p minus 2 may not be equal to 0. So let's write that. And p minus 2 may not be equal to 0. So we've got to think, what value of p makes this denominator equal to 0? And the answer is obviously 2 because 2 minus 2 would give me 0. This obviously means that p cannot be equal to 2. Okay, now we know the values of p that are not allowed. Let's solve the equation and see what our answers are. Here we have two denominators, p and p minus 2. Remember that p minus 2 is regarded as one whole number, simply because we're taking the value of p and we're subtracting 2 from it. p minus 2 cannot be further factorized. So we can write the LCD as is equal to p multiplied by p minus 2. Do you know what to do with the LCD? Remember, we want to simplify the equation. To do this, we must multiply every term in the equation by the LCD. So, we need to multiply 2 divided by p by the LCD. Remember, we are working with fractions, so we have to write the LCD as a fraction divided by 1. Is equal to 3 divided by p minus 2 multiplied by p times p minus 2 over 1. Now, let's cancel out terms. p divides into p once. p divides into p once. Now here, do you know and remember that p minus 2 is one term, so we can put brackets around it. So the p minus 2 goes into p minus 2 once, and p minus 2 goes into p minus 2 once. We are left with 2 multiplied by p minus 2, which is equal to 3 multiplied by p. Now there's still brackets here, which means we need to multiply 2 into each of the terms in the brackets. We get 2 times p, which is 2p, 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, which is equal to 3p. Now we can solve for p, but remember, we need to keep the equation in balance. We have 2p minus 4 equals to 3p. I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. So we get 2p minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 3p plus 4. We get 2p is equal to 3p plus 4. Next, I subtract 3p from both sides of the equation. I get 2p minus 3p is equal to 3p minus 3p plus 4. We get minus p is equal to positive 4. Now remember we are solving for positive 1p, which means I need to divide by negative 1 on both sides of the equation. I get p is equal to negative 4. So we need to check whether or not this value for p makes the equation true. We know that p equals to negative 4 is allowed because of the restriction. Now on the left hand side of the equation, we can substitute p as being negative 4. We get 2 
divided by negative 4, which simplifies to 2 divides into 2 once, 2 divides into 4 twice. So I am left with negative a half. On the right hand side of the equation, if we substitute negative 4 for p, we get 3 divided by negative 4 minus 2, which is equal to 3 divided by negative 6. This simplifies to 3 divides into 3 once, 3 divides into 6 twice. I'm left with negative half. Now because the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, we know that our answer p equals to negative 4 makes the equation true. In that example you learned, to solve an equation with a fraction in it, you have to change the equation into one without a fraction by finding the lowest common denominator. You also learned how to write down the restrictions on the denominators. Now before we cross back to Amashni to look at more fractional equations, I want to remind you about the different types of factorizing. Do you still remember all the different ways you learned to factorize expressions? Let's do a quick recap. The different ways to factorize an expression are taking out the highest common factor, finding the difference of two squares by factorizing a trinomial, grouping like terms, or finding the sum or difference of two cubes. If you recall your rules for factorizing, then you are ready to cross back to Amashni, who will show you how factorizing will be used in solving fractional equations. Now it's time for us to apply our knowledge of factorizing to solving some equations. Have a look at this example. Solve for x if x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 2x is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2. Now we already know the processes that we need to solve this equation. But remember, to make our equation simpler, we must find the lowest common denominator. Now if we look at this example and take x squared minus 2x times x minus 2 as our common denominator and then multiply this by each of the terms, our calculations become very complicated. But we'll eventually get to our answer. Remember, we try to keep our calculations as simple as possible. To do this, we must find the lowest common denominator. If you remember, previously we factorized x squared minus 2x to be x times x minus 2. So we can write this expression as x plus 2 divided by x multiplied by x minus 2 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2. Now, what is the LCD? What number includes all of these factors? Do you see that the LCD is x multiplied by x minus 2? Now we can solve our equation. But remember, we must multiply each of the terms by the LCD. Now what do you remember about keeping the balance in the equation? Whatever I do on the left-hand side of the equation, I must do on the right-hand side. This means that if I multiply the left-hand side by the LCD, I must do the same on the right-hand side. So multiplying by the LCD, we get x plus 2 divided by x into x minus 2. Now remember, we are working with fractions, which means that when I'm multiplying, I must write the LCD divided by 1. So the LCD is x into x minus 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 multiplied by the LCD which is x into x minus 2 divided by 1. Now we look to cancelling terms. x divides into x one time. x divides into x once. x minus 2 divides into x minus 2 once. x minus 2 divides here once x minus 2 divides here once and here once. We are left with x plus 2 is equal to 2 times x. Wow, so now this 
is a really simple equation. Although it contained the x squared initially, we now have a linear equation. I will subtract minus 2x from both sides. I get x plus 2 minus 2x is equal to 2x minus 2x. This simplifies to minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now I subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. I get minus x plus 2 minus 2 is equal to minus 2. I get minus x is equal to minus 2. Remember, we are solving for positive 1x. So I get x is equal to positive 2 when I divide by minus 1 on both sides. Now, let's check our answer by substituting this value into the original equation. The left-hand side is equal to x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 2x. If we substitute 2 for x, we get 2 plus 2 divided by 2 squared minus 2 times 2. 2 plus 2 is 4 divided by 2 squared is 4 minus 2 times 2, which is 4. We get 4 divided by 4 minus 4 is 0. But wait a minute. The denominator is 0. This is not allowed because we cannot divide by 0. Now, although we solved our equation correctly, we cannot use the solution. So let's go back to our calculation. Here we see that our LCD, which was the lowest common denominator, was x multiplied by x minus 2. Now we know that our denominators are not allowed to be equal to 0, which means our restriction would have been that x is not allowed to equal to 0. And here, x minus 2 is not allowed to equal to 0, which means that x is not allowed to equal to 2. This means that for this equation, there are no solutions. Or in other words, there are no values for x that satisfy the equation. Let's look at the next example. Solve for x if 1 divided by x squared minus 1 is equal to 2 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. You should recognize these denominators from when we revised factorizing. x squared minus 1 factorized to x minus 1 into x plus 1. x squared minus x minus 2 factorized to x minus 2 into x plus 1. Now we can write this equation as 1 divided by x minus 1 into x plus 1 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 into x plus 1. Now that we've factorized our denominators, we can find the LCD and solve our equation. The LCD must consist of all the factors from the denominator. So in this expression, we must include x minus 1 and x plus 1. In this expression, we must include x minus 2 and x plus 1 in the LCD. But we know that x plus 1 is already written here. So all that we need to add is x minus 2. So our LCD is x minus 1 into x plus 1 into x minus 2. Now, what is the next step? How do we simplify this equation? Now, we have two terms here, and we have to multiply each of them by the LCD. Remember, we are working with fractions, so when I multiply, I must multiply by the LCD divided by 1. Let's have a look. I've got 1 divided by x minus 1, x plus 1. I need to multiply by the LCD. Let's go back. The LCD is x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So we can write that. x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2, x plus 1 multiplied by the LCD over 1. minus 2, 
divided by 1. Wow, you need to keep your wits about you. Let's cancel out factors and simplify this equation. The factor x minus 1 cancels with this factor x minus 1 and we are left with 1 and 1. x plus 1 cancels with this factor x plus 1 and we are left with 1. Here, x minus 2 cancels off with this factor x minus 2 and we are left with 1. x plus 1 cancels with this x plus 1 and we are left with 1. Now let's rewrite our equation. We've got 1 multiplied by x minus 2 <coughs> is equal to 2 multiplied by x minus 1. Let's simplify. We get x minus 2 is equal to 2 multiplied into each of the terms in the brackets gives me 2 times x, which is 2x, 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Now, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. And here, 2x minus 2x minus 2. I'm left with minus x minus 2 is equal to minus 2. Now I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. I get minus x minus 2 plus 2 is equal to minus 2 plus 2. And I'm left with minus x is equal to 0. Now I need to solve for positive 1x, so I need to divide both sides by negative 1. And I get that x is equal to 0. So, we've solved the equation and we know what our answer is. What is there still left for us to do? Yes, we've got to check our answers. But I'm going to leave the checking of this answer for you to do as part of your task. Now, we are working with fractions. What other potential problem do we have? Let's have a look. In the question, we know that the denominators are only defined when they are not equal to 0. So, I've got to make sure that x squared minus 1 is not equal to 0, and here, x squared minus x minus 2 is not equal to 0. Now, let's check by substituting our value for x into each of these denominators. For x equals 0, and we have x squared minus 1, which is the first denominator, we substitute 0 for x, we get 0 squared minus 1. Now 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 1 gives me an answer of minus 1. So for x equals 0, the denominator x squared minus 1 evaluates to minus 1. This means that our denominator is fine. Now let's check the other one. For x equals 0, we are checking this denominator, which is x squared minus x minus 2, and substituting 0 for x, we get 0 squared minus 0 minus 2, and this evaluates to minus 2. Great, so x equals 0 does not make the denominator 0, so it is allowed. So now you know how factorizing denominators can help you solve equations. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Equations and Inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.